class of this poem, A Legend of the Northland. A very good morning to you all children. In the previous two classes, you have uh, seen the videos wherein I have explained the uh, first few stanzas in the first class and the second part, that is the middle part of the poem in the previous class. And today we are going to look at these remaining six stanzas which will tell us what happened after the lady was baking smaller and yet smaller cakes which she eventually did not give to Saint Peter. So uh, when the lady was feeling that the cakes are smaller for her eyes but when she has to give it to him she always felt that the cakes were much bigger to be given away. Let's see uh, as she delays in taking the cake to Saint Peter, what has happened from his side? Then, good Saint Peter grew angry, for he was hungry and faint. And surely, such a woman was enough to provoke a saint. And he said, you are far too selfish to dwell in a human form, to have both food and shelter, and fire to keep you warm. Now you shall build as the birds do and shall get your scanty food by boring and boring and boring all day in the hard dry wood. Let's look at the last three stanzas also and then I'll take up with the explanation of today's first stanza. Then up she went through the chimney Never speaking a word, and out of the top flew a woodpecker, for she was changed into a bird. She had a scarlet cap on her head, and that was left the same. But all the rest of her clothes were burnt, black as coal in the flame. And every country schoolboy has seen her in the wood, where she lives in the trees, boring and boring for food. So there the poet ends the poem. Let's understand through the lines of the poem what happens. The good, then good Saint Peter grew angry. So when the lady was delaying in bringing the cake to him, Saint Peter was growing up angrier because he was already very tired and feeling faint because of hunger. As it was towards the end of that particular day and uh, usually if we see saints and uh, people who are very spiritual and religious, those who are not living normal human life, they finish the whole day fasting and towards the end of the day they prefer to eat some little food. So when she asked, uh, when he asked this lady to give him a cake, she kept on delaying uh, to bring him the cake because she felt every small cake looked very big to her. So, uh, St. Peter was growing angry as he was towards the verge of his hunger. And surely such a woman was enough to provoke a saint. See, a saint means a person who is very humble, calm, polite, who does good to others. But when people try to insult them or do wrong in front of them, those who are not sincere, it's very easy for a saintly person, not just a saint, any saintly sincere person to get angry looking at those who are not sincere. So here he sees that the lady is not doing what she had told him. She could have refused him saying, I'm not giving you anything, but she went inside thinking of getting a new cake for him and she doesn't come back with cake for the saint. So, such a woman, such a woman here means a selfish woman who is not ready to give a part of her food to the saint. So, the poet says this type of a woman is surely enough to provoke a saint. Provoke means Cause a, reason, cause a reason for making him angry. Provoke means initiate something. So here what is the initiation in the saint? The anger. The emotion that initiates in the saint is anger. He gets angry because of the woman's behavior and he is going to do something with the lady now. And he said, who said? The saint says, you are far too selfish. I think it's very clear. 
to dwell in a human form. What do you mean by the word dwell? Dwell means to live. We have seen no dwelling of uh, birds or where do we dwell. Dwell means live. So the saint says, you are such a selfish person to live in a human form. You are not eligible to live the life of a human because you are far too selfish. People can be selfish for some particular reasons. But here in this case, the saint has identified the lady to be extremely selfish. So he says you do not deserve to live in the human form. To have both food and shelter, not only you don't have the rights to live in human body, but you should also not get food and shelter. Food that you eat three times or whatever, whenever you want, whatever you eat, you don't deserve to get that. You should not get a formal proper shelter also. Shelter means a place to live. You should not dwell in the human form. You don't deserve to get proper food. You don't deserve to live in a proper house. So he says, you are far too selfish to dwell in human form, to have both food and shelter and fire to keep you warm. Why does he say you don't deserve fire to keep yourself warm? Because they are in a cold region. So he says not only human body, food and shelter, you also don't deserve fire to give warmth to yourself. Because of your selfishness, you do not deserve all these things. Now, still the saint continues to say, after telling what and all you do not deserve, he says, you shall build as the birds do. So he says, because he said you don't deserve to live in a human body, you are going to live the life of a bird. That's why he says, you shall build as the birds do. You have seen how the birds will build nests. They will collect straws and other dry things from here and there. They will find a corner and start building the nest very slowly. It will take a long time for a bird to build nest. So the uh, saint tells the lady that now you are going to live like a bird and you are going to build just like how the birds do. And you shall get your scanty food. You know what is scanty children? Scanty means very less, too little. So uh, just imagine how much can a bird eat? Bird will eat only a few grains of some, some uh, cereals or pulses or some grains. So he says you will build a house like how the birds do and you will also get a very scanty amount of food. How will, they, uh, how will she get it? By boring and boring and boring. Boring means doing a very hard work by digging the woods. Uh, mean, uh, means uh, a tree or some log of wood where the birds will dig using their beaks. You would have seen woodpeckers do that, right? So he says, by boring and boring and boring, all day in the hard, dry wood. So the sage tells, not just says, he is creating a curse for this woman. Curse means a bad um, saying which will be effective immediately when a saint or a godly person says that. So he says you are going to live the life of a bird by struggling, by working hard. You will build a house for yourself and you will eat very little amount of food, food just like how the birds do. Then up she went through the chimney never speaking a word. So when the saint causes this curse on her, she immediately transforms into a bird and flies up through the chimney. You know where is the chimney? In the beginning you saw that she was baking the cake on the hearth. So if you see that um, hearth is a place here where uh, logs of wood will be there and fire will be lit. On top of it you will have some chimney which will be connected to a pillar kind of thing. So through that where the smoke escapes from. If the chimney from which the smoke from the hearth will escape, what happens? The lady is immediately transformed into a bird and she just flies out of this chimney. Then up she went through the chimney, never speaking a word. Why didn't she speak? She didn't speak anything because the saint's curse was so effective that immediately in that instant she was converted into a bird and she flew away from the, flew out of this chimney. And out of the top flew a woodpecker. So what was she turned into? She was turned into a woodpecker and she comes out of the chimney. 
for she was changed into a bird when the uh, saint causes the cause the curse immediately she was transformed into a woodpecker and she came out flying from the chimney stalk she had a scarlet cap on her head so here scarlet means the color of her cap so scarlet is a very bright red color which the woman had on her head she had a scarlet cap on her head and that was left the same so when the lady was wearing that scarlet cap on her head and she was transformed into a bird which flew out of the chimney even then the cap remained on her head on whose head the bird's head the color of the cap was retained on the bird's head but all the rest of her clothes were burned so when the bird came out of the chimney what happened the lady's clothes were all burned inside that chimney because there will be fire already there was fire she was making cake using that particular fire so what happened when she started coming out of the chimney all her clothes got burned but the cap the red color cap that she had on her head remained intact so she had a scarlet cap on her head and that was left the same but all the rest of her clothes were burned black as coal in the flame so all her clothes were burned and her body also took the color of black because when she came out of the chimney there was coal and black color all accumulated on the walls of the chimney so she adopted that black color and the scarlet caps red uh, that red color remained on the head of that bird and everything else was burned down so with the curse of the saint what happened the woman was immediately transformed into a bird which type of a bird a woodpecker you have seen that uh, in many places you would have seen that a woodpecker bores into the wood using its beak so that is digging the wood and scraping it out and it builds a house inside the tree okay so that is what the saint said you are going to live the life of a bird by boring and boring and boring that is not an easy work it's a very hard work to do so he wanted the lady to work hard so that she realizes her selfishness and she will get very little food only that amount of food which a bird can get by a full day's hard work and then only it can accumulate some amount of food for itself okay now after this curse what happens in the present time when the poem has been written and every country school boy has seen her in the wood so what happens school boys the boys who go to school every country school boy means country here means maybe a village or a rural area okay so when we say country people means people who belong to the village or the rural areas every country school boy all the school boys here they have written school boy because the story was written in this poem was written in the 19th century and uh, the story is a legend so the poem is written in 19th century which is talking about ancient times story then only the boys went to school it was not the girls females were not allowed to go to school it was so not only in our country children worldwide that was the practice in the ancient times they were not sent to the school but education was probably provided by the other family members okay let us just assume it that way so every country school boy has seen her in the wood who is that earlier the little woman who was transformed into a bird so every boy who went to school in that area has seen her in the wood here wood means jungle a small forest where she lives in the tree so like the uh, saint said the lady was living in the tree in a wood boring and boring for food so as per the curse given by the saint all she had to do was keep on boring in the tree and gather food and live inside that tree so whenever people saw this bird they associated this bird with this legendary story that uh, a woman like this lived who did not uh, help the saint who was very selfish 
the entire story is narrated to children and the moral from this story is also passed on to the children saying that greed and selfishness always leads you to bad ending so uh, the way of passing on a moral story through the form of ballets has been in practice since ages so when you all masterminds are willing to write a story or a poem there are a few things which you can keep in your mind for writing a poem we follow certain literary devices which i which i've been telling you for a long time the poetic devices help you to put up a poem in a very beautiful way okay so here we conclude the poem with the moral given from this uh, poem that greed and selfishness always ends in a bad result okay so that's all children today i'm going to send you further notes uh, and then i also send you some activity along with this